Welcome to my shop, my name is Guy, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Big Tree Tech SKR3 mainboard. So this is everything you get in the box with the SKR3. You of course get the motherboard itself, get a USB cable to connect your printer, a good selection of jumper caps that you're going to need to do different functions on the board, and also a complete set of JST connectors to connect anything that might not connect to this board with the regular connector you have, and of course, a rubber duck. Let's take a little bit closer look at the board and see exactly what it has on it. First of all, the star of the show is the MCU. This is a 32-bit ARM Cortex M7 processor clocked at 480 megahertz. That is astounding for something like this on a main board. Now across the top of the board there's some interesting stuff going on. First of all you've got the five spots for the five stepper drivers but you actually have six stepper motor inputs. You've got X and Y, ZA and ZB so you can run dual Z axis. You've also got extruder one and extruder zero for two different extruders. Also here and here are two different spots for fans. Now these are 24 volt and they're on all the time, but those are nice to have in case you need them. Over here on this side of the board, you have the XP1 and the XP2. That's for hooking up an older style display. These are all the limit stops right here. You've got Z, X, Y. You've also got two different stops for extruder zero and extruder one. And that's if you've got a dual extruder setup. There's also a power detection right here that you can hook up to a relay to turn the system off when your print is done. Underneath the limit stops, you've got spots for your BL Touch and also RGB, which is five volt. You can also use this for your Raspberry Pi, which is really nice. These three ports here are for your thermistors. There's one for your bed and thermistor one and thermistor two for the extruder. That's again for a dual extruder setup. Above the inputs for the thermistors is another input right here. Now this is actually to hook up an auto power off relay. I misspoke before. The fitting up here is for a UPS recovery loss. My mistake, but I would have found that out if I would have hooked those up. Next to those is a TFT connector, and that's for a serial, an SPI, or a LCD display. Next to that, and this is really exciting, is a CAN bus connector. This is for a controller area network, so you can hook up the hot end, the thermistor, all those things that go to the hot end through four wires. Very cool, and I'm pretty excited to try that out. This is the interface, so you can put a micro SD card in here, and these are to hook up a Wi-Fi module so you can actually hook it up to Wi-Fi. Again, very cool. This of course is the USB connection to hook up to your main board. This button right here, if you press that down, that activates the CAN bus. So you can control everything through the CAN bus instead of the USB. Right here we do have two fuses for the board. Now these are the different power connectors for the board. This is for the heated bed. This is for the power input, which can be 12 or 24 volts. These are for your different uh, hot ends. Hot end one and hot end two, again, dual extruder. These right here are the different fan connectors, fan zero, one, and two. All these are controllable through the software, which is very nice. There's also a plug right here. If you add a module to this, you can actually tell it to run five or 12 volts for all three of those at the same time. These fans are going to be 12 volt or 24 volt, depending on what kind of power you input here. Above the connectors for the Wi-Fi, there's two little pins right here. If you put a jumper cap on that, you can actually power this board with five volts, and that'll give you enough power to flash the firmware on the board without hooking it up to 24 volt power. Now I'm going to be using 2209 drivers on this, and I need to remove a lot of these jumpers I'm just going to keep this one here for UART connections, which is a 2209 driver. So I've pulled out all the extra jumpers, just leaving this one here, and that's for UART mode. Now these are my 2209 drivers. I just need to install these. I only need four. I need to make sure I hook them up the right way. And those just get plugged in these right here like that.
I have all the stepper motor drivers installed. I only needed four, like I said, because I've only got one extruder. I don't need this one. Now all I need to do is install the heat sinks on top of here so these stay nice and cool. Also on their GitHub page, and you can also get a big tree tech, is a full manual, and it goes over in great detail how to set up the firmware for both Marlin and Clipper. All the things you need to do to make sure you've got it right. Very nice. I'm ready to power this board up for the first time and flash the firmware. I do have a micro SD card that's formatted FAT32, and I've downloaded the firmware from the Big Tree Tech GitHub page. I've got the USB connector hooked up. I've also got this jumper cap on right here so five volts will power this board. All I need to do now is turn it on. A light will come on over here and another light will come on on top of it that'll be red. When that one stops blinking, the firmware is flashed and I'm ready to go. Well, that's it. I just need to disconnect the power. So that's Big Tree Tech's SKR3 mainboard. This is our flagship motherboard. It has a ton of inputs and outputs, as I showed you before. A lot of capability. If you're going to upgrade your printer, this is a very good choice. I'm going to be upgrading my Ender 5 Pro at this mainboard right here on this DIN rail that's going to be installed eventually. I've got the Big Tree Tech Pi 4B and their CB4 module hooked up, ready to go. It's all flashed, all I need to do is install it. But that's a subject for another video, maybe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.